Right, well that's a problem. So when you crank down, there is so much force in there, it pops it back up again. So clearly, I have a strut that is too strong. Thanks for joining me. So the job I'm doing today is removing this rather clunky spring-loaded head support arm off my Sieg SX2P Mini Mill and replacing it with a gas strut. Just a fairly standard gas strut that you would see, say, on the boot of your car or, or whatever. The one I used was 500 millimeters fully extended and 100 newtons force. Um, originally I got one that was 300 newtons. It was way too strong and the head kept bouncing up again afterwards. The fittings that I used on the ends were standard ball joint fittings for the 100 newtons. It six, seems to be an M6 thread on it. The ones I got initially were M8, so I had to do a bit of faffing around. So the first job is to remove the old spring-loaded arm itself. So that's really simply achieved on the other side of the vertical slide from where that sprung-loaded arm is. You'll see this little cap. All you've got to do is take the set screw out. Um, it's a bit stiff, I found, on mine. Um, so as you can see, I had to pop it off with a pry bar. So after undoing the bolt that secures the top of the arm to the head, the whole assembly just lifts out and you can see this little cap is left. There are just three screws left inside. Undo those three screws and the whole cap lifts away. So the last thing to take off is the vertical height gauge. This is just held on with three or four screws. Very simple to take off. So next job is to drill and tap a hole for the top end of the arm. You can see the hole is carefully positioned to miss the uh, uh, dovetail, vertical dovetail on the left and the bottom of the drive, the spindle drive on the right. It's about 20 mil down, three quarters of an inch. So that top one is fixed quite well. That's now um, screwed in. So now we're looking at the bottom. What I've done is put this line there halfway exactly, because why not? and I will make a mark where that arm goes to and then drill an hole and hopefully we should be into there too. Okay, moment of truth. Can we get this bugger to ackle? Apparently we can. Okay, so this um, worked out pretty well in the end. You can see it goes down beautifully. It's just absolutely like silk. It's really nice. It goes all the way down to the table, holds its position even without the clamp on, and goes up really nicely too. A couple of things. One is I don't know if you've noticed, I've switched the position of the gas strut around so that the thin arm is at the bottom. I don't know why, it just sort of felt right to do that. And the other thing I've done, I don't know if you can see, I made this little brass spacer there just to stand the end out a bit to make up for the fact that at the bottom it's a bit further out. And the idea was just to get a bit more parallelism in that gas strut. So that's it for this job. I'm reasonably happy with that. I think it came out fairly well. The next video will be about how I fitted this vertical DRO and how I managed to run it off the mains rather than off batteries and also made a slightly tidier job of the enclosure which um, also incorporates 
the Hall effect sensor, the speed sensor, which I fitted in the last video. So if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link in the description. Be sure to stay tuned for the vertical DRO fitting. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.